Entrepreneurship really isn't easy. You're gonna go through some extremely rough times, and I've experienced this, right? Depression, extreme amounts of anxiety, you know, there was times when things got really, really dark in my life. And I did some therapy and all that stuff, but honestly, two hours into reading this book, and my anxiety had dropped tenfold. I know that sounds completely BS, but it's absolutely not. Hey, what's up guys, welcome back. Piers here from Impulse Labs, and first off, I wanna apologize. I've been inconsistent with my YouTube videos, um, and I thought I felt like a hypocrite, because here I am telling everyone to be consistent with your marketing, and it's been two, three weeks since my last post, but I do have a good explanation. I recently competed in a bodybuilding competition in Romania, the amateur Olympia in Romania. In the last few weeks, my brain started getting a bit foggy. Um, so I was trying to prioritize all my energy into doing my client's work and, and building my business. And the thought of getting in front of a camera just wasn't a possibility. And I'm actually a week out from my next show now, but I decided just to like bite the bullet, try and record this video all in one go. Um, and then, yeah, just kind of see how it goes. But that's why I hadn't, I hadn't posted in, in, a, in a couple of weeks, is that, you know, the diet was getting heavy. I had to go to Romania, a lot of things going on. I had to prioritize certain work, but I'm back. And actually, next week, I'm gonna be recording a video, about, it's kind of like a day in the life, about how I do manage to balance all these things I do, because, you know, I'm, I'm building my clients' businesses up, my businesses, whilst also being able to pursue passions and hobbies like bodybuilding. And I think it'd be quite an interesting video, so stick around for that. That'll be coming out next week. Today's video is about business. It's about books I've consumed over the years, which I feel drastically, uh, essentially changed my life when it came to business. And I'm gonna separate these books into three different categories, okay? First one, strategy. Second one uh, is gonna be mindset. And the last one is gonna be inspiration. So with that being said, I'm just gonna dive straight into it. So the first book, which I am, I'm not sure if it's the first business book I consumed, I think I consumed when I was very young, um, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which isn't on my list, but it's a great book regardless. It's a great book regardless, but the first real business book uh, I consumed around strategy was called How to Build a billion dollar app by a bloke called George Berk Berkowski. Berkowski, okay? At the time, I had just torn my ACL. I had this app idea and I went about building it and I launched it. I launched it to about six, six months to launch on the App Store. And this book was the literal roadmap on how to build an app. And it's it is absolutely incredible because the way the book is structured is that each chapter is almost like a phase in your app's uh, life cycle to a billion dollars, okay? So, just, so, the, so the first chapter is called Step One, The Million Dollar App. And it's going from a zero to a million, okay? And it tells you what you need to be focusing on at that particular stage to kind of get there. It talks about how to find a good co-founder, what, what platform you should be building on, what you should be prioritizing, how to raise investment, what kind of investment you should be looking for, how much you need. Then step two is the 10, the 10 million dollar app. And it talks about the difference from going from 1 million to 10 million. Step three, the 100 million dollar app. Step four, the 500 million dollar app. And then step five, the billion dollar app. And as you work through it, it, it it's, it's not, it's not wishy-washy, it's not fluff. It's literal, you know, this is the first person you need to hire at this stage. At this stage, you need to hire these people. Like, it's incredible. It's an incredible book. And if I had it on me today, you'd see like the, the spine of that book is worn thin, you know, and, and, and it's definitely a book you want to buy and not do audio. Okay, so I'll, I'll talk about whether I did audio uh, or these books or not, because I feel like the, the medium which you consume them makes a huge difference. And for this one, you definitely want a book because it's, it's more like a manual. You know, it looks like a book, structured like a book. You want to be dipping in and out of it. And I feel like the paper, you know, the physical book is exactly how, how you do that. So that is number one, how to build a billion dollar app. Massively recommended for anyone in the software space, specifically, obviously, if you are looking to build an app. Uh, obviously, it's quite a niche. The next one 
is the opposite of that in terms of it's not niche. It's basically anyone who wants to build a, a, a startup, a business. Probably have heard of this book before, The Lean Startup by Eric Ries. And this is a true classic. Um, I think it's probably on everyone's top five startup books of all time. And similar to the last book, it's structured into phases or, you know, in terms of the chapters. And then the first phase is called part one, vision. Then the second one, part two, steer. And then lastly, part three, accelerate. So it's kind of put into these phases about how you should build a startup. Okay, you need a vision, you need to steer it in the right direction, and you need to accelerate in that direction. Now, the two main lessons I got from this book, which have massively helped me in my career, are the two concepts. Okay, the first one being the MVP concept, and the second one being around pivoting. Okay. So MVP, this stands for Minimal Viable Product. Okay, essentially it is, what is the bare bones minimum thing I need to release to prove my concept in the market? Okay, I got this incredibly wrong, my first business, which was the app I was just talking about. Like I said, it took me six months to launch it. And I launched it on the iOS app store. The truth is, I shouldn't have done that. I should have tried to prove my concept using the absolute minimum tools available to you. And for me, I could have done that using uh, like uh, pre-exist or like existing technologies, okay? I could have used the technologies, I could have gone out into market within a couple of weeks, start asking people questions, start like, you know, basically duct taping together a product and getting people to use it to see if my concept was correct, okay? If I had done that, I would have had real feedback from real people around, you know, around what I was doing, and I'd be able to use that data to make better decisions in my business. I mean, for example, that app I built took six months to launch, okay? Hadn't told a soul about it. I launched it and I realized that a business model wasn't right because uh, I hadn't asked my, con my customers enough questions. I hadn't put a product into their hands. To kind of give you like a brief history of it, it was a live streaming app. I would go into gyms and I'd fit their gym, like the, the gym studio, the yoga classes with cameras and live stream those classes to their members' homes. But I made a fundamental mistake with the business model in terms of how people would pay, okay? I could have worked that out really, really quickly by, you know, week one of this idea, going into a gym, putting up my phone, and live streaming it using Facebook Live or Zoom to their members, right? And then I would have realized whether the members actually wanted this or not, for one, and how the, the, the gyms would have wanted to sell it. I would, I would have worked that out straight away, okay? Far too often I see people keeping their business like a secret. I don't want to tell anyone about their, their product, which I think is bizarre on so many levels, but, um, but the, tr the truth is that, is that your product, your idea might be perfect in your eyes, but it might not be in the eyes of your consumer. Does that mean your whole business is fucked? Absolutely not. It just means that you need some tweaking, okay? You need some adjusting, which actually brings me on to the second concept from this book I liked, which is pivoting, okay? And, I, and just to kind of define pivoting in like a real sense. Pivoting is when you keep one foot on the ground planted, but look to change direction, okay? so. In business, this means your, your overall like concept and business as, an, as, a, as a whole, as an entity doesn't change. It's just you're making tweaks to it, okay? You're making adjustments, whether it's sort of business model, the design, the look, the feel, even like your market, that could be a pivot. It doesn't mean you're tearing down business. It's just changing direction, okay? Again, I had to do this many times in business. In fact, every business does this, okay? And some businesses, they are very successful ones. They're just really, really good at it. That doesn't look like, a, you know, because often people associate pivoting with failing. It's literally not that whatsoever. At the end of the day, you'd have to be pretty arrogant to think that your idea, which you wrote down on a napkin one day, is perfect to a T and can scale to a billion dollars. There's zero chance of that actually being true. So as you start to build it out and, 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 and you know, bring that idea to life, you're gonna to have to make changes. You're gonna to have to like put your ego to one side and be like, right, that idea I had probably isn't quite right, we need to change it. 
And this ties into my previous point about going to those gyms and kind of getting it wrong. And we ha I had to pivot. I literally had to pivot. And like to kind of go into more uh, um, detail about that example, you know, so I'd built this app. It was, it was live streaming fitness classes, but I'd built it as a marketplace, a two-sided marketplace, a little bit like a Deliveroo. And in fact, I would say it's like the Deliveroo of fitness classes. You open your app, you pick a gym, and you get to what you know delivered. You get the, the class delivered to your home. You can watch it on your TV or on your mobile. Okay, some gyms love that idea. Others, especially the really good gyms I wanted, hated the idea of them being on a two-sided marketplace. Okay, they didn't want their members going onto a app which is under a different name, my, my business name, and seeing other gyms on that. All right. So the pivot I made, you know, because I was beating away at this business and uh, you know, it wasn't making much money. It was probably making less than 8,000 a month in revenue. So, you know, in the eyes of, a, of an investor, that's pre-revenue, okay? If you're making, you know, eight, less than 8,000 a month through a business, you, you haven't really got much. So I was like, just like, just tired and drained. So the pivot I made was I, you know, I spoke to those gyms and I was like, what is it you want? And I said, um, I want you to build that app, but just for me, my branding, my my classes, only my members. And I did that and I went from making less than 8,000 8, a month to making about five times that a month within two to three months, okay? So it's hard to say it's a failure, an incredible decision to make and I actually like panned out the rest of my career. So. So that's an example of a pivot which worked really, really well, okay? Okay, next. All right, and it's quite funny. The, these books kind of work and the way I'm listing these books, not deliberately, is kind of um, done as in a very specific order. Like your first one, how to get started, or how to build. The second one is, is more strategy and how to pivot, how to find product market fit. The last one is once you've found product market fit and you're making money, what issues come alongside of that? And the book I'm talking about it's a book called Profit First, okay? By a guy called Mike Michalowskis, something like that. In his book, he actually says, uh, just call me Mike Motorbike. And I think his website's even Mike Motorbike. Um, like .com or something like that. Um, Profit First, absolutely incredible book. I listened to this on audio, and I would vastly recommend listening to it on, on audio and getting the book, because you need some of the graphs to go alongside of it. Um, he, he does, he does the audio, right? So often when it comes to audiobooks, what I've found is that if the author is the one reading it, it's probably gonna be quite good. If it's not the author, it tends to be really dull. So in this case, uh, Mike does read it and it, and it is a really good audiobook. So what's this book about? It's probably had the most impact on my business out of, out of all the books I'm gonna list today. I just mentioned a period of time when I went from making 8,000 to about five times that, right? During that period of time, high growth period of time, my discipline around money was really poor, okay? It, essentially, I was having cash flow issues. And I read the slogan for this book and it just hit home with me. It, the slogan's, transform your business from a cash-eating monster to a money-making machine. Now, if you're anything like me, I hate anything to do with accounting or accountants, okay? I don't wanna speak to them, I don't wanna hear anything from them, just do your thing and just tell me the, the bottom line, right? I also had so many issues with accountants in terms of like being able to project cash flow, okay? Because, you know, at the time my business had pivoted into an agency and clients were paying me and I had to kind of get the job done and often I'd have to pay contractors like three months later to get a job done or I haven't got the money for it. Profit First is a system which teaches you, like a modern day system that teaches you um, how to manage your uh, cash flow specific to an entrepreneur who is starting out. The, the essential um, kind of like framework of it is that every time you get income, okay, um, you take a percentage or percentages of it and you put it into separate pots or separate banks, okay? Um, I can't remember the exact percentages, and actually the percentages change depending on how much you're making, but, and it's called product first, because you take the profit one first, okay? When typical, typical accountant, account, account, um, you know, typical accountants will calculate profit by revenue minus expenditures. So revenue first, then you do your expenditures, and what is left is your profit. 
this turns out upside down. You get your revenue, you take your profit immediately, and then you structure the everything else for expenditures dependent on how much you've got left, okay? Incredible concept, because I'm sure you've been here before, right? Whether it's in your personal life or in your business where you haven't got much money, but yet you see, still, still find a way to adjust your budgets to that, uh, okay? Or, 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 like, or like the famous analogy of like, you know, if you've been given 10 minutes to clean your room, you'll do it in 10 minutes. If you're given three days, you'll do it in three days. It's kind of similar, right? If you've got a, a bank with a thousand pounds in it, you'll spend it. If you've got a bank with 10,000, you'll spend it. So this is kind of like deliberately taking away money into a profit bank before you start spending. And then he talks about just simple things like opening up a bank account from one of those old school banks where you've got to like call people up to even just like get, take some money out. Perfect, that's your profit one and your tax one as well, okay? That's another, another important uh, point. Because then if you wanna take money out of your profits, you've gotta go through you know, hurdles and loops just to kind of do it, which is perfect, because you're probably not gonna do it, right? It's not instant, you can't just take money out and then spend it, because that's not your mind spend, it's either the tax man's money or it's your profits. Okay, moving on. We are now gonna go into the mindset section of my you know, favorite books. Um, I'm a huge believer in that mindset is everything when it comes to business. Having said that, you can't just like, you know, have the right mindset and not have the right action to kind of go alongside it, okay? Anyway, first book on the list, Psycho Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz. I'm currently staying uh, slightly away from home right now. It's kind of isolated, like, like I said, I've got a competition. Come up, come up in a week, I like to be by myself beforehand so I can focus. Um, that's a book I brought with me. Got it, run this from my bed, okay? Psycho, Psycho Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz. Often this is referred to as the Bible of self-help books where lots of today's self-help books and motivational gurus are just basically deriving it, deriving their concepts from this one book, okay? Essentially, what, what this book is telling you, and you've got to read it, you know, you, I can't just explain it, is that in order for you to do the things you want to do in your life, you've got to become the person who's capable of doing those things. And in order to become that person, you just got to become it. You actually got to start doing the things that person would do, the habits that person would do, the way a person would think, the way a person would dress, okay? And vividly visualizing that person as if you were already that person, okay? Because there's, the concept in it is that often, well, no, you know, apparently, factually, the brain cannot tell the difference between something which you actually experience and something which you vividly imagine, okay? So you wanna be vividly imagining those successes first uh, and your body will feel like it's experienced them. It sounds really woo-woo, but seriously, just think about, you know, a, a huge success, okay? Let's take, let's take Usain Bolt in 2008. Do you think he ever for a second did not believe he was gonna break, he was gonna win the 100 meters uh, Olympics? Look at his confidence, the way he holds himself. He was already a winner before the gun went off. He believed it, he embraced it, he embodied it first. And that's kind of what the book is all about. Next one, Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. So you don't know who David Goggins is. He's a, uh, God, how do you explain him? I mean, he kind of came famous in the last five years. He appeared on the Joe Rogan show and that's kind of how he got well known. Um, he's got a really good Instagram account. And uh, he, you know he's a, he's a Navy SEAL, also an ultra marathon runner. Uh, but you know he, he he's many things. A hundred percent, you've got to listen to this book on audio. The reason being is that he he doesn't actually read it. His uh, and it's funny because he explains why he doesn't read it because he didn't have the best upbringing. He's not the most educated person. And he says that himself. He has his friend read it. And in between chapters, they have like a little mini podcast about the chapter. He is one of the most inspiring people out there. The, the book tells you that you can literally do anything you want. And no matter how shit your life is, it's probably not that shit. And, and, it's, and it, it can get worse and worse and worse, which is kind of what happened to him. You know, it was, for him, it was setback after setback. It's almost an unbelievable story. Like you, you listen to it and be like, I, don't, I actually don't believe this. Um, and now at the end of every single chapter, he gives you specific to-dos, like specific ones. And he's, he's quite a dark guy. Like it's, it's quite like, you know, 
um, hardcore, right? So, you know, the to do's are, are very much like come to terms with the, you know, the, the, the omens in your life, like things like that. It's, it's, it's a really, really good book. I can't recommend it enough. Um, one of my biggest take homes from it is this very powerful statement. He says towards the end of it, at the end of the book. And the statement goes something like, you know, that and this is now David speaking. My biggest fear is dying, going to heaven. And as you're on, on your way to heaven, there's these big gates towards heaven, right? And God's at those gates. And you've got to almost like interview to get into it, right? He's lining up, he gets to the front of the line, he's at the gates. And God shows you a projection of the person you could have been, right? And everyone's getting to these gates and they're, you know, and, and I don't know, they're maybe they're out of shape and they've fucked up their lives or whatever, right? Not necessarily that, but maybe they just live a normal life. And they then see the projection of themselves and they see this incredible person they could have been, but they just never took, you know, took up. Took up. And so that David's biggest fear was getting to his gates and seeing this person and, and it, it not being him. And instead he wanted to see the person and be an exact mirror image of the person he is today. I thought it was a very really powerful statement. Uh, and I really, really liked that. Okay, the next one, feeling great, okay? Um, slightly personal note here. Entrepreneurship really isn't easy. You're gonna go through some extremely rough times and I've experienced this, right? Depression, extreme amounts of anxiety. You know, there was times when things got really, really dark in my life. Um, and I never really acted upon it. I never really seeked help or got therapy, but when those anxieties started creeping into my personal life, that's, you know, like my relationships and things like that, I then started to take action. And I did some therapy and all that stuff, but honestly, two hours into this book, again, audio one, but I'd probably recommend the book. I actually end up buying both. Um, two hours into reading this book, and my anxiety had dropped tenfold. I know that sounds completely BS, but it's absolutely not. This book is all about cognitive behavior therapy, okay? Actual tactics to reduce anxiety and depression, and they goddamn work. They work so, so well. I cannot recommend it enough. If you, anyone you know, suffers from depression, or anxiety, or something like that, this is the book they need to read, 100%. So you probably, you know, so I think that's, I've included it in it because I know so many business business people who suffer from anxiety, depression, you know, and, and it's more common than you think. So I included this book, even though it's not a business book, um, because of that. Okay, next one, a classic, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. I put off reading this book for ages because of the title. I thought the title was just like, I don't know, it's really off-putting, like, How to Win Friends, sounds like, you know, I don't, I don't know, it just doesn't sound right. Regardless, this is a classic and it's a classic for a very, very good reason. The tips I learned from this, I still use on a day-to-day -day basis, okay? Essentially, it's, it's, about, it's about how to give off a really good first impression is one of the things that you learn in it, and essentially how to become more, more likable. And in business, this goes a long, long way. Um, networking, investors, prospects, sales, being likable, friendly, approachable, can make drastic changes uh, you know, in your business. So I've included that one. The last one in the Mindset series is Think and Grow Rich, another absolute classic. Don't listen to the audiobook. You have to try and read this book. It's quite hard to read, but don't listen to the audiobook. You will fall asleep 100%. It's got a really dull, monotone voice. Um, absolute classic. I won't go too far into it, but you know, it's, uh, it's almost like a, a, a must-have in the self-help genre. Okay, finally, inspiration. I've got two here. Both are, you know, stories of two businesses which um, have become very successful. One is of Nike. So it's from the founder of Nike and the book is called Shoe Dog. Absolutely incredible. I listened to the audio of it. Absolutely love it. I've probably listened to it about five times. It's an incredible book and it's just so inspiring. It's spine tingly, spine tingling. Uh, inspiring. It's absolutely incredible. The last one is Creativity Inc, which is about the story of Pixar and how they competed with Disney. Again, absolutely incredible. Um, you know, those kind of books, you're not going to like learn 
strategy from them is for inspiration and that does go a long long way it's being motivated and driven you know especially like i said business can have a really dark time so you know getting some inspiration and, and some and some uh, motivation can go a really long way to kind of get momentum going also you learn that every business is fucking hard and they go through really dark periods okay and that's the common theme is that they go through dark periods they just didn't quit right i've said this a million times so my favorite quote is that that what separates, you know, uh, businesses which don't, have done well and ones which haven't is that their founders just didn't quit. That's like the number one trait. So that's the inspiration side of the books. I hope you've enjoyed my review. Again, sorry for not putting out more content. I'm going to be putting out more content now. Um, and if you've got any requests for videos, hit me up. Thanks, guys.